Hi Uniqlo's, it has been a while since I have done this. Today we are doing a life milestones Q&A. Let me put you down. There's a lot of things happening in my life this year, a work career, buying a house. I posted on my AG story and I got a ton of your questions. Thank you for submitting. And if you have no idea who the heck I am, don't worry, I'm Chloe, what's up? I'm a product manager in tech. On this channel, I talk about work, money, life in late 20s. So what prompted this video was that I got a message from one of y'all who was like, hey Chloe, I really love your videos. I wanted to hear what's going on with all of these updates that you're sharing. I am a mother and if my daughter went through that, I just would be concerned. It would be great if you could share a little bit of an update. And I'm like, oh, I was really appreciative of her sending that to me. So hence, here is the video. I know that this year had a lot of confusing things. I did go to Tokyo with Kevin and we did take wedding slash engagement photos. We are not married. We're in the process of buying a house. What's up? What's going on with all of that? And obviously work is in the picture. We just had layoffs. So many things. Let's talk about relationships first. One of the most common questions I got was, Chloe, how do you know that he's the one? Ah! What? Kevin, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I am someone who is very unafraid of commitment. I think it comes from seeing my parents stick together through thick and thin. They really have gone through the trenches. I'm just like, what I learned from them was that the one is not someone who's like you're destined to be with. It's not your soulmate. It's because I chose him. He is the one. Does that make sense? It's a little bit different. Amongst our friend group, we are probably in the healthiest tier. I get that comment a lot. For Kevin in particular, I love Kevin. He is my favorite person in the whole world. He is my best friend. He makes me laugh every single day. And that's one of the top things I have been looking for in a partner. <sighs> Man, I definitely need to dive into Kevin a lot more in a dedicated relationship video. We're definitely gonna talk about how we met, what our first dates were like. It was very not ideal and how we made everything work. I think it's a really good story. What is the most impactful lesson I learned in my relationship with Kevin? And that is learning our relationship is not about you versus me, but us versus the problem. I think that's my favorite takeaway. Mm. Yay. <laughs> Before I move on to the next question, I told myself I would do productive things while I'm filming. So I'm gonna be unboxing this side table here that I bought from Muto. I also got a lot of questions about couples therapy and how it helped me plan for the long term. For context, where we are in our relationship is I've met Kevin's parents in Michigan. He's met my family. Our parents have met each other. He came to Taiwan earlier this year to meet all of my extended family. So things are progressing pretty well. And actually, I don't think I've mentioned this publicly anywhere but I'm Kevin's first girlfriend. That's a big reveal, isn't it? Huh? I actually filmed a short that I have posted or will be posting on my Instagram or TikTok this week so check that out. Ooh. I am a huge proponent of therapy and when I first brought it up, I definitely was way more experienced in it than Kevin. And he was the one who was a little bit more hesitant. He had to take some convincing, but he eventually got around to it. I think one of the biggest unblocks is therapy. It's not just for people who are going through the worst parts of their lives. It's actually the best time when you guys are healthy. Then you can go through your problems when you're in a more steady state. Right now, we mostly talk about planning for the future. Kids, marriage, buying a house together, taking care of each other's families. We still fight, not super often, but, but we work on dissecting those arguments so we learn how to fight well. Oh my god, do I need to wear socks? Well, I had to change my top because I was sweating bullets and I needed to put some socks on. It makes me more comfortable. <laughs> Continuing, when are you getting married? I have no idea. Only one of us will know. <laughs> Emotionally, we've been ready for a while. We've been talking to our therapist about this. Logistically, you know, we were traveling, we need to do the house thing, there's a lot for work, like, ugh. but now we are very ready. I just wanted to give him more time so he isn't gonna rush the planning process. Because I think planning a surprise is very, very difficult. I have a question on how do we spend finances as a couple? We'll talk about like general finances and then we'll talk about the house. How's that? I feel like this is a Kevin and Chloe conversation, not just um, like a Chloe answer. Am I, am I okay in this angle here? You don't look very cute in this angle. Come back here. We were pretty 50-50, yeah. we but 50 /50. in our first date, we did go Dutch, right? We went Dutch on the first date. And that was not okay with me. <laughs> anyway, story for our actual relationship video. Nowadays, since we're more committed to each other, it's more as if our finances are already one. We split it where things make sense. Sometimes we even just split it based on who has the better credit card reward points. So it's, it's different now that we're in a committed relationship. But we did talk through everything about our finances. Like we know everything about each other. All of our accounts, you have on my logins. <laughs> For the house, we are pretty much just splitting all the costs 50-50. Both so. of our names are on the mortgage and the title slash deed. So we are putting a contract together with the lawyer just for safety. I think this would be a harder conversation if we had a very different salaries. Yeah, we make similar income. We're like in the same income bracket. So. I make more. 
We're in the same tax bracket, so. I'm the sugar mama. No, actually, Kevin used to make a lot more than me and then he helped me so much and build my confidence at work that I was able to negotiate a much higher paying compensation. And then I took a pay cut. To follow his passions If I didn't gaming. take a pay cut, we would make the same. Yeah, I think so. This is, I cannot pick this up. My <laughs> nails are cracking. This is so heavy. Wait, what the fuck? <gasps> Kevin, do you want to have kids? We've always said that since we started dating that we both wanted to have kids. There's a lot of questions on when though. Obviously, I'm entering my 30s very soon. So lately, we've also been talking about, man, life might just be easier if we didn't. I know. A lot of our friends don't want to have kids or they want to surrogate, mainly because they want to stay young and have a lot of money and they don't want to destroy their bodies to do it. I think I'm just a very nurturing person, so is Kevin. We would be really delighted to be parents. What do our Asian parents think of us not getting married yet, but buying a house? My parents were fine with it. Your parents were fine with it. I yeah, think both our parents it. already know we're in a committed relationship. We're going to be engaged this year. <gasps> That's true. <laughs> When um, you say it out loud, it's like, well. If we weren't already like confident in this, I don't think we would have bought a house together. That's true. And also in California, you just tend to need dual incomes in order to afford one. How do we set up our budget to buying a house? There's rules of thumbs that you can use. And so the common one online is the monthly payments for mortgage and utilities should be only 28% of your gross income. I'm definitely going to do a whole standalone video about my house buying process. So more details there. So the rest of the questions are about the offer, what we're non-negotiables were, what we were looking for, how did we find the home. You were browsing Zillow for like a, a year years. and a half ish. Yeah. -ish. I think you're seriously looking when you're finally going to open houses. We got a real estate agent through a friend recommendation. How did we know what kind of home we wanted? Actually, Kevin was less opinionated about having a home. I think Chloe's standards for a home are just higher than mine. So whatever's <laughs> good with her is going to be good with me. Look, it is my dream to have a home, okay? I really wanted a home where I can decorate. I'm a huge homebody. I love just hanging out and just staring at the home. It was a very personal decision. Uh, Yo, this is not a line. Look. It's, it's gonna be at the bottom. You're never gonna see it. But what if it wobbles? You try, can't try, take try, it. Try, 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 try. It'll Teamwork sucks. It's okay. It feels really high quality. This is cute. <sighs> Let us continue. I think I could have stayed in our rental, but the thing was I couldn't really customize this space. Like I can't change out the flooring. I can't really drill too much. I just really wanted my own space to create. I love interior design. And like a low key might want to do that after product management. I don't know, who knows? Uh, so we were looking for something that was within our budget. So we had to do like a bunch of calculations. Unfortunately, interest rates are pretty damn high. They were over 7% when we were looking and that sucked because that does change your monthly payment slash your mortgage. But we decided that buying a home wasn't an investment and it wasn't a financial decision. It was literally a personal decision. We wanted to buy a home for us to live in. So we were looking for two to three bed and at least two baths. Beautiful windows because I love lighting in LA. This is where our careers are going to be for a while and when we're ready to start a family and when we're ready to move for a school district, we will. How did we know this was a home that we would put an offer on? We actually put one out last year, but that didn't work out. We almost put one out earlier this year, but I decided to not because I just like wasn't feeling it. I kept going back to the open house and I was like, oh, it hit everything on my checklist, but something about it made it feel really dull. And then this one, it hit all of our checklist items and it just felt nice. We actually visited the home five times, sat in it, hung out in it before I decided, okay, I can see myself really excited about living here. We're still in the escrow process. It is actually advised to not talk about your house buying process publicly until you close because it could get risky. So I'm sorry that will come much later, which I hope is soon. So that's everything about the house. Let's talk about career things now. Ooh. By the way, I don't know if you've been following my Instagram and TikTok posts, but I've been posting a lot of me cutting watermelon and talking about work, life, relationship stuff. One of my friends told me I should name this series Slice of Life. <laughs> I think that's a perfect name. I get a lot of questions about how I manage my full-time job and my content creation. I really do not advise living this life. People tell me that I look like I have it together, that I'm doing so much all the time. It's hard to do just one full-time job. I don't think this should be glamorized or glorified. I just love creating videos and that is my main hobby. So if you have a life outside of work, all of that will take a huge hit. I just wanna say my life is packed to the brim and it is not sustainable and I do not plan on doing both forever. Just want to put that out there. Anyone who does both doesn't sleep a lot or they're lying about how much work they actually do, which unfortunately isn't the case for me. My day job is a lot. Do you think making content about your work helped your career or hurt your career? 
hmm. There are definitely companies that would not take me because I create content. However, I did get a lot of visibility from creating content. So I do get a lot of outreach from recruiters and it has actually self-selected for companies that share similar values to the stories that I share publicly. I literally work on the creator revenue team. It requires you to understand creators as a customer segment. So I think I have that as a superpower in my arsenal. I got a lot of questions about work trauma, overcoming burnout, how to remove yourself from the job so your identity doesn't rely on it. Work trauma is very difficult to overcome. Obviously a lot of therapy, a lot of time, a lot of time away. I think I had to travel to Taiwan to disconnect and know that there is so many other life paths out there outside of corporate America. Recently, I have read the book, The Good Enough Job, Reclaiming Your Life from Work by Simone Stoltzoff. And I found it really refreshing because it talks about the concept of a dream job and why that is not healthy because you're putting all these expectations on a job and work is fundamentally an economic relationship and it's just a job. It really is. I actually just had a conversation with my manager this week telling him that I don't want to get promoted. I don't want to tie my identity and work that extra several hours a week just for a chance to be validated in this leveling system that I fundamentally don't agree with. I believe that there's so many other things in life that I'd rather spend that time doing. So I made that intention clear. That said, I'm still a very high performer. I wanted to set very clear expectations that my career goals are to be amazing, to keep learning, to be a PM that everyone's pumped about working with and have a life outside of work where I get to eat lunch, grab coffee and wake up early enough and have enough time to you know put makeup on and put like a whole outfit on work out healthy boundaries that has helped me detach from all the crazy things that i cannot control at work it's been really healthy i recommend it about the future a lot of you ask will i ever do an mba would i get a master's mbas i don't think it's valuable to me i have a really strong network and i've done my work to go out there and meet all these really cool people founders venture capitalists investors high up executives and i think that is a huge part of what going to b school will give to you. Also, a lot of people who go to B school are like kind of younger than me at this point. I feel like I have missed my window of opportunity. It's also ultra expensive. All that money is not worth the networking and traveling and hanging out. Those are things I can do today while making a salary. Now a master's degree. I actually got into the master's program at Columbia and was taking classes towards it. And it would have taken me about a year to get a master's degree, but I decided to drop it altogether because I just felt getting a master's degree and spending another year of tuition would give me anything, which has proven true. However, I do want to go back to school. There is a couple of art schools near me in LA and they have really cool art and design classes. So I'm very interested in like interior design, product design, color theory, game design, animation. I've been looking through the catalog and I've been really thrilled about what kind of artistic skills I can amplify. I wanna create some cool projects out there, you know. I really love being a craftswoman and I think product management has been awesome in terms of the strategic business leadership element, but in terms of like getting my hands dirty, like rolling up my sleeves and doing it myself, I don't get that much exposure to it. Are you gonna quit and do content? I want to quit, yeah. I don't think I know anyone who really wants to work forever. So eventually I do wanna quit. It's not glamorous to uh, hustle towards deadlines all the time. In terms of doing content, to be honest, I don't think I really want to be a traditional full-time content creator. I've seen the good sides and I've seen the bad sides. And I just don't think that I have it in me to like really compete in that realm. I do think I will do content forever or as long as I can. It's really fun, but to make that my profession is kind of not that interesting to me. It doesn't mean I don't want to be a successful content creator on this platform. It just means uh, I don't want to quit to be the other, if that makes sense. It's complicated. Would you ever venture into tech in Asia? So I have worked at TikTok by Dance, which is a Chinese company. I think you should know by now. <laughs> I did work in Taiwan for almost half a year and I collaborated with Taiwan Tech Arena, which is like an incubator accelerator for tech startups in Taipei. I would love to do more for tech in Asia. I just don't really know know how. And I know people watch me in Taiwan, in Singapore, Japan, Korea, but I don't have those relations. If you are connected, please send me a message because I would love to work something out. And lastly, I did get a lot of questions about advice for being a product manager. I know that I made a what do I do as a product manager video too two years ago or something. I think that's pretty outdated. So I'm gonna make a new one that will include everything, the whole shebang, what I do in 2023, what I've learned after all these years doing it in different companies. Those career videos are coming back. So now we're gonna go through rapid fire the rest of our miscellaneous questions. What's your Myers-Briggs? 
It's ENFJ. I don't know what that really means. You're extroverted. I'm barely extroverted. I'm like 55, 45 though. Intuitive, feeling, and judging. I'm judgy. Judging mm. means you prefer to be planned and organized rather than spontaneous and flexible. I'm not spontaneous at all. How do you balance showing almost everything in your life to people without feeling that someone may feel bad about themselves or maybe they want to have your life? I made a rule if I were to share about my life, it would never be to show off. I think I've made a couple of cringe TikTok videos in the past that was a little show offy. It made me realize that that was not something I wanted to put out there. I don't like hate scrolling, creating jealousy. If I want to share about myself, I want to make sure I equip the other person with the right tools and information to get there themselves. For example, like there's a trend of sharing your compensation and a lot of it is really based off of showing off. But as a viewer, you want to watch it because you want that for yourself, right? So instead of showing off my compensation, I would share the ladders for your years of experience. So you can use that to go negotiate what comp that you deserve. What vlogging equipment do you recommend slash use? I have tested so many things and so many cameras and I still am. I've linked everything in my Amazon storefront. It's a big fly. <laughs> I use a lot of Sony, Rode, and my phone. That's basically it. Did you ever have complicated feelings about how you were raised versus other classmates? Mm-hmm. I grew up pretty not well off. Kevin has gone to my house and he's been appalled <laughs> by how my family and I grew up. I went to private school for college. Everything was paid for. I got all the government coverage, everything. That was the first time I met private school kids who are super, super wealthy and went to famous boarding schools. Who goes to famous high schools? Like, What even is that? Money and the way people treat money was just so extreme there that I felt I could never fit in and he didn't have a good experience living there. I couldn't do a lot in college because everyone else had different size pockets than I did. I think I just focused on myself, what I could do, my studies, my clubs, and I think that's okay. Hmm. What's the worst financial decision you made in your early 20s? Too many. <laughs> Doing a startup <laughs> and having all that equity go to nothing. That was rough. Not negotiating. Leaving my Google job a little bit too early and not letting my equity fully vest. Dating some guys. That was a bad investment of time and I spent money to like buy gifts for them. I didn't spend that time and money on myself. You know what I mean? I could have blossomed far more. It's a lot of bad financial decisions. Nothing detrimental. I don't have like a gambling habit. Were you even investing? Uh, um, not actively. I just put money in my 401k, my Roth IRA. Maybe I bought some VO. I don't think I really tried to invest, but now I'm a lot better. <laughs> Last question. Mm. What traditions are you excited to incorporate into your wedding? Dude. Well, I definitely want to take Kevin back to Taiwan to do a Taiwanese style photo shoot and wedding banquet dinner for my grandma and my extended family. I'm really close to my aunts on my dad's side. They raised me to the woman I am today. I don't think I have any big dreams for my wedding because I think it's really stressful. I do have one very unrealistic dream, which is doing a musical number and singing with my significant other, but Kevin can't really sing, so you might have to dub. <laughs> you might have to dub yourself. I don't even want a maid of honor. I don't think our wedding structures is gonna be very traditional, but we'll figure it out. We have no idea. I'm not even engaged yet. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> That's a wrap for all the questions. Thank you for submitting them. Hope you enjoyed today's answers. I have a lot of videos coming out. Obviously, we're gonna do an apartment tour when we move out. A lot of you asked about that. We'll talk about the housing process in full detail when we close. And then I will drop my evergreen, what I do as a product manager in 2023, all the new insights I have learned in the past few years of working. I'm also gonna be posting a lot on short form just cause I wanna try out this new slice of life series. Send me more questions and topics that I can cover there. It's much easier for me to edit that than edit YouTube videos. I can get way more conversations going there. Be sure to check out my previous vlog where Kevin and I went to Japan. Shout out to Coffee Meets Bagel for sponsoring. Thank you to all the Uniqlo's who are always there supporting me on Discord, behind the scenes. That's all I've got for now. Stay safe, y'all. Mm.